parasocialism. It's a one-sided relationship where a person knows so much about a particular content creator, influencer, fictional character, and in this case, VTuber, and forms a certain kind of attachment towards no, them. No, social. While those figures knows nothing about that person. Those kinds of attachment depends on the viewer and content creator, be it familial, friendly, or romantic in nature. It is subtle, insidious. Creeping Top up talk. on people and developing without them not even knowing. You know One day they could enjoy a particular beat. streamer, influencer, or VTuber, and the next they'll find their heart suddenly broken upon hearing those influencers might be in a relationship. While in most instances people just unsubscribe or unfollow, or even the usual petty whining in some random image board or Twitter thread, some instances can be so deranged and horrific, like committing suicide after their favorite characters die, or stalking harassing and scaring their favorite content oh creators God. their entire life. In recent years, yeah, the Amaranth has thing been was pretty... by literally everyone. Some critiques and... <laughs> the Amaranth thing with the stalker from Estonia was... That was... Uh... Uh... <laughs> For the people that don't know, um, Amaranth, um, the most popular... Well, she was the most popular female streamer on Twitch had a stalker fly all the way from Estonia and was stalking her house for... I, th I think a month? It was, um, yeah, and the, and the guy was streaming the entire thing, and he was sending her, like, a bunch of, like, really disturbing stuff, too, like, uh, I think he, like, sent her some nudes <laughs> and some other stuff, but, um, at some point, um, I, I think the last thing that happened was, like, he tried breaking into the house, and that's when, um, that's when the cops finally decided to do something about it, because, um, even though Amaranth had um, a correspondence with the cops, they were not doing anything about it just because they didn't think it was dangerous, even though the dude was clearly breaking some, you know, like some, some privacy stuff. But anyway, <laughs> let's get back into this. And problems exaggerated, but often they parrot the same opinion. Parasocialism, bad. And in one way, I agree. The deepest ends of parasocialism are cause for one of the internet's most fucked up stories. But I don't think parasocialism is necessarily bad. See, parasocialism is more nuanced than that. While everyone simplifies it to just a person developing some kind of obsessive or unrequited attachment towards someone or something. Yeah, I'd say I agree. It doesn't have to necessarily be bad, but it, it has to... The, the burden is solely on the creator to foment the type of um, community that's, you know, not insane. <laughs> um, I think the only one that I've seen that actually, like, has, like, a, a pretty, like, like a, a really good community is probably Jerma. But outside of Jerma, I haven't really seen anything else um, to that level of um, just, you know, like, how tight-knit and how least insane they are socially i mean they're insane but <laughs> they're not you know they're they're not they're not picking fights they're not um they're not trying to stalk germa at least as far as i know and they're not doing other insane shit that you hear from people who are so deep into it but let's keep there going. are actually layers and depths to consider a weeb seeing the boys on trash taste and listening to their podcast every day because they're just like me for real a man inspired after his favorite influencer that once suffered the same problem that he had, overcome it. A man deciding to learn a language just because their favorite VTubers knows how to speak it. Parasocialism yeah, that. isn't the Venta Black concept that many people there's paint some, it as. Um, it can be healthy. In fact, some inspiring I would argue things. most cases of parasocialism is actually healthy. We all have parasocial relationships in some shape or form. By its technical definition, being a fan of someone is a parasocial relationship. And most of the time, that actually helps us grow. Like learning a language, mastering an instrument, becoming a good dancer, or even just a temporary escape from the harsh world so that we can come back refreshed and ready to face it again. Sometimes, we just need our role model and Oshis to give us encouraging words. Sometimes, we just need a temporary escape. But when people start mm -hmm. depending on them and reach the deep end, that's when the parasocialism problem actually becomes a problem. When requests for words of encouragement become pushy for words of validation. When instead of being inspired by your favorite content creators to fix your issues, one ignores it and retreats to them for comfort. When one escapes reality and leaves for good. Many people have talked about the dangers of parasocialism, especially that of a romantic nature. 
I'm not going to be one of them. Though I did offer my opinion and that's going to be crucial for my overall message in this video. No, I'm here to answer another question that nobody seems to have answered yet. Is the parasocialism- yeah, like, just like anything really, moderation is key. <laughs> uh, just, just don't go too insane, you guys, you know? ...problem for VTubers. Worse. Keep it light. But how do Keep you even fun. measure that? What is a base form of parasocialism? By worse, I don't actually mean the level of intensity. Because parasocial fans going absolutely batshit crazy over their favorite influencers is not exclusive to VTubers. In fact, yeah. I actually think in terms of degree, the VTuber industry isn't that problematic. At least, compared to K-pop and dream stands, they're way fucking worse. By worse, I mean how heavily the yeah. culture of VTubing not just revolves around Jesus. it, but also needs it. Even more so than normal streaming communities. In fact, the industry banks on it, indirectly encourages it. However, this isn't exactly new. So Tons of companies money. and industries like the K-pop industry, the American boy band culture, and the Japanese idol culture fosters and encourages parasocialism in all manners of depth. Because it's the thing that draws in the money. It also doesn't help that the VTuber boom started in 2020. Literally the time where many people were isolated, lonely, and in a mm -hmm. bad spot in their life due to pandemic lockdowns. While the healthy part of parasocialism got these people to forget about their loneliness momentarily and eventually get back to their feet, the dangerous part is that now some people vicariously live off of these anime girls. But while parasocialism exists everywhere in the media, streaming communities in general are more prone to developing it since viewers and fans actually have a line of direct communication with that person. Viewers share their vulnerabilities with the streamer, they banter, they have inside jokes, and it makes it so that the viewer feels like they know this streamer for real, like they're close friends with them when in reality they aren't. And eventually, they go to their streams every time just so they can talk to them, to see what they're up to. Eventually, they develop a parasocial bond. Whether that's on the healthy side or on the deep end ultimately depends on the individual viewer. However, parasocialism can actually also go the other way around. In fact, I'd argue parasocialism first starts on the streamer or VTuber's end. Relatability is a tricky thing to manage as a VTuber. In one hand, they absolutely need it so that people can connect yeah. with them and understand them better. I mean, how about just be completely unrelatable, be completely insane? <laughs> Why not? Why, why not go that route? <laughs> part of a healthy parasocial relationship, of course, but why can't we do that? It's their responsibility to put up proper boundaries. Still, no matter what you do, Become even an if absolute you put up that clown. boundary, there will always be fans that will fall to the deep end of parasocialism. Gachis exist for everyone, not just Someone for will VTubers. Relate? Putting up Damn. boundaries okay. serves no to lessen the impact of those gachis. But I can't entirely blame the gachis, though, because it's actually the influencers that start seeing their chat as their friends first. Because the chat is always there, cheering mm -hmm. for them and occasionally tossing them money. Who am I to deserve your time and money? I need to repay you, would become their mentality. And this bond would deepen for better or worse, usually worse, when eventually the VTuber shares their vulnerabilities, past traumas, and too much of themselves to their audience. It's an indirect invite for other people to start pouring their hearts too. And thus starts a cycle where they essentially feed on each other. Some people trauma dumps during a random moment on a stream and sees their VTuber as a waifu therapist. And some people dedicate entire months of their lives making videos worshipping a single VTuber. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe two. It's especially worse for VTubers who are troubled because the chat starts developing some kind of savior complex. That's the reason why a lot of VTuber fans love unstable girls and menheras. Because they're just like me for real and to them, they're way cuter than a normal professional VTuber. As such, this is a part of the job for most VTubers. Even if one is literally the funniest VTuber ever, they often need to skirt the edges of parasocialism, even more so than regular streamers, to find the middle between the shallow and the deep end. They can't stay completely unparasocial with their audience for long because parasocialism is the lifeblood of this industry. It's what fans expect and want from VTubers. Most VTubers fortunately manage to find these sweet spots, and those that go over the edge end up in unpredictable places. As examples, Rusha got godded and was humiliatingly exiled from Hololive and Vox is seeking professional mental help after the whole Reimu drama and maybe developing into a Menhera himself. Yes, they're still what? active and popular, but they've earned maybe developed- What happened to them? Uh... Okay. ...developing into a Menhera himself. Yes, they're still active and popular, but they've earned themselves- I'm really out of the loop. I don't pay attention to- <laughs> 
Yes, they're Other still VTubers. making bank, and they still wanna pursue the GFE and BFE experience, but at what cost? Of course, I'm not saying that Busha or Vox deserved the mental damage that was inflicted upon them due to parasocial fans and criticism, but what I am saying is that it's par for the course. Things like these were naturally going to happen. There's even a chance that it'll continue to worsen as they keep descending into the abyss. And again, everything that I've said so far aren't exclusive to VTubers. They happen to regular streamers too. Mm. However, the reason why I think it's a tad more problematic for VTubers is because VTubers are easier to objectify. VTubers appear as anime characters, they play in oh, the or character archetype. And due to this, it's really easy to forget that they're still humans. I was only saying, oh god, because it's, it's, actually, it's too job. real. There's already a growing global culture of men it's replacing real. male relationships with waifus. And pair this up with the idol culture, which I'll talk about later, and you get a special kind of problem. But things get even more complicated when you remember that it's part of the magic of VTubers. Them role-playing is part of the appeal of the gimmick of VTubing. VTubers are basically interactive shows when you think about it. Them acting like caricatures, playing into tropes, being a neat because they're just like me for real, playing into the shipping culture, these are all parts of a VTuber's appeal. And the natures of these appeal makes parasocial relationships all the more easier to form. It's much harder for VTubers to manage their fans because they have to keep that magic alive while making sure most of their fan base doesn't fall too deep into parasocialism. And if their fan base have already fallen into the deep end, whether intentionally or accidentally, they start walking on eggshells. Most of the time, VTubers fail in managing that balance because parasocialism is already a key component of the VTuber culture, and sometimes it even dictates the success of a VTuber. Of course, while parasocialism is already a necessary component for a regular streamer or influencer, in the case of VTubers, parasocialism isn't just necessary, it's glorified. Enter the simping culture. Originally, the word simp was an insult to men who like female content creators a little too much, to a point where they'd spend a shit ton of money in hopes of getting some action in return. But during the VTuber boom, fans have not only adapted that word, they turned it into a badge of honor. The oh, most God. loyal simps and the craziest, most active whales are respected and glorified. Someone who cashes out literally tens of thousands of dollars to super chat their Oshis in a single month are labeled as mad lads, a god amongst men. Half of the fanbase look at this ironically, but the other half do so unironically. Somehow, the simping culture has distorted our perception of such herbivore behavior. Somehow, the simping culture has made this the norm of the industry. And while I agree that this culture is part of what makes the VTuber community unique, it doesn't make it any less weird when you actually look at it from the outside and look at it without rose-tinted glasses. But again, this culture is what makes the industry special. For better or worse, mm. it is also part of the magic of VTubing. In fact, this culture is why the VTuber boom happened in the first place, and why Hololife became the most popular global VTuber agency. Because the thing about industries is that the top dogs will always be the trendsetters. What they do is what most people follow in order to get a similar result. Hololife's idol niche became the meta for the industry when the VTuber boom happened, and as a result, idols and VTubers have become intertwined permeating to every corner of the VTuber industry. Idols have something of a problem with parasocialism already, so it's only natural yeah. that it was going to make it worse. I still remember but that one idol who had to like shave her head because um, she was caught having a boyfriend. <laughs> and it was really disgusting to look at. Like just the fact that she had to um, do that. And she had to like make a public apology, like televised even. All because they're not allowed to have um, boyfriends. Because, <laughs> um, you know, they, they, they have to be easy to objectify, I guess. <laughs> it's fucked up. The idol culture, which is really the fucked whole up. not talking to males thing, among others, spread mm -hmm. out across the VTuber industry. It's not that any agency, including Hololive, is forcing their VTubers to follow this toxic part of the culture and be parasocial because it's mostly perpetuated both by the viewers and the individual VTuber. And while this industry has been doing well to shed off toxic parts of the idol culture, like the whole not allowed to talk to males thing, heavy parasocialism yeah. is still the lifeblood of the community. And it's worth Also, the right, um, who was it? Like that guy from earlier? Um, who popped into the stream? Uh-oh. Yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty big example right there. 
But even VTubers are getting it now. Super industry is still cringe. going. Hell, this year Niji Sanji has accidentally started the hot Bishy Boys trend, and companies seem to be starting to follow to profit off of those sweet, sweet parasocial women. One thing that I've observed too is that the parasocial aspect of VTubing is worse for the eastern side of the industry than the western side. The Japanese, the Chinese, or really Asians in general are more prone to fall into the deep end of parasocial relationships. And as a result, they're the most loyal and profitable, but also the most volatile. There's a fine line between dangerous and healthy yeah. parasocialism. In fact, that's pretty much the point of this video. To yeah, find again, that line, the um, to find that <laughs> like just just the ja like Japanese idol culture in general, like all of those people went ass mad that she had a boyfriend that that she had to shave her head to apologize, and imagine the amount of death threats that she had to face after that, like Jesus, and like since a bunch of, and since a bunch of them like tend to spend a whole lot of money, like a lot of them will be like, what about all that money I spent on you? You know, like, the, they all get crazy over that, and they'll be like, give it back, give it back, give me my feelings back. And it's like, dude, you must be... whatever. It's, it's some level of, like, being so dumb that you can't see what's wrong with you. When a VTuber knows that their chat are just their fans and not their friends, appreciating them, but still keeping a distance. When viewers know that the VTubers are just doing their job, still buying into their kayfabe and having fun but maintaining a healthy separation. But dangerous parasocialism is dependency or codependency between VTuber and fan. When the lines blur both for the chat and streamer, and they feel the need to see each other to complete their day. When the viewers start seeing the VTuber as their waifu therapist, a romantic, or their friend. Mm. Healthy parasocialism is the reason that the magic of VTubers exists, and it's one of the elements that make VTubing unique. Enjoying your Oshis as cute anime girls doing cute anime things is one of the most unique experiences of online entertainment. But dangerous parasocialism is the horror of the VTuber community, as it can ruin entire fan bases, VTubers, and further damages the reputation of the industry. The moment you buy into the illusion too much and forget that these VTubers are just normal human beings doing their job as entertainers mm -hmm. is the moment you start to slip on the edge. The moment you stop being a fan and start seeing yourself as their friend or lover is the moment you need to take a step back. All of us are parasocial towards someone or something in various degrees, but when you start substituting parasocial relationships for actual real relationships, realize that you're falling on the deep end. The parasocial problem only becomes a problem when you let it become a problem. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Leave a like and comment down below if I've missed something or if you have something to add. And if you'd like to engage in a parasocial relationship with me, joining my membership or Patreon will be the best way to do so. Yeah, and this is why if you're a creator, you need to set boundaries as early on as possible and enforce it as much as you can. Just you know, just implant it into your fan base or your community to not do things that you don't want them doing. And, you know, I mean, even then you will have, um, you will have bad eggs, right? But, uh, it's just that fact that some people, um, don't do it early on, that they tend to struggle once their community starts growing. Like, I've heard a bunch of complaints about, like, people, um, getting... What do you call that? Like having to deal with um, being so sexualized by the community that they um, that they have like a lot of trouble just like starting streams because they have to deal with that garbage. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you just have to deal with it early on. Snuff it out early before uh, before it, get, it gets worse. But I mean, I, I get how difficult it can difficult it can be. But you know. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, um, even the creator, like, tries, um, like, unknowingly foments that type of behavior. And by the time they realize, it's, us it's usually, like, too late by then, and the culture is already ingrained in their community, and they'd have to either, like, just do, like, a complete, like, overhaul of the community, which will do a lot of damage, or they just either stop, and I've just been seeing, like, a bunch of people stop, um doing what they do just because they can't handle the community that they built but you know that is in some way your fault so 
But either way, um, that was a pretty good video.